thank you so much for being with us today. I love the way you work with such bright, intense colors. Your quote crayons are really paint sticks, are beautiful. And the way you create fabric to use in quilting is very unique. Thank you. I've had a great time. I bet you do have fun doing this. But, but you don't do piecing. Nope, not with this technique. I don't. Uh -huh. I figured out how I can just play with color. Just play with color. I like that. I may okay. take this up then. <laughs> Let's go ahead and show a few examples. We can even do this on ready to wear we, if we don't want to do quilting. Yes, um, that these uh, squares are, think of it like making a, a tiered layer cake. They're three uh, one. squares of uh -huh. different sizes, uh, layered one on top of another one to create that effect. Uh -huh. And those are another sample. Basically what I'm doing is, is making, it's a traditional uh, geometric design, which is what quilt blocks are, um, without doing the piecing. I am painting, which we're going to demonstrate uh -huh. here in a minute, and layering my squares, and some of them get it cut into triangles, and voila. 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 These are all beautiful. And this little quilt is called uh, quatrille. It is the same concept. There is... Uh, no piecing at all. It, actually, sewing does come into play when I get to the quilting part, and it uh -huh, is quilted well, sure. in the usual way. Uh -huh. But the, the top is done completely without sewing. And we're go going to see how we make these beautiful in colors. In just a minute. Oh, this is pretty. And uh, this one is called Fiesta, and this is a, a very simple, um, just layered, layered squares, basically. Just layered squares. Yep. You make it sound so easy. It is. <laughs> it is just as, as simple as putting one square on top of another square. Uh, this one is uh, actually a sampler, which I used in my uh, latest uh, quilt uh, pad. Uh, it's called Painted Quilt Blocks mm -hmm. Pattern which uh, Cheryl has there, and that pattern will take you through all the steps required to do those blocks. Mm. And that's a beautiful piece. Mm. And uh, if we aren't into quilts or wall hangings, what a clever idea. Well, you know, frame the it. thing about <laughs> these designs, there's nothing wrong with just framing it and mm -hmm. putting it on the wall. You don't have to put it into a, a uh, right uh, a quilt. I might would frame my very first one if I ever mm -hmm. finished it. Yep. Oh, and this is really a or cute idea. you could take those basic mm -hmm. blocks and you could uh, fuse them to uh, a handbag as an embellishment. Well, that's a great idea, too. Mm -hmm. Tote bags of all sizes of are all so popular. Sizes. Uh -huh. Many, many options available. Okay, how do we start doing this? Well, we start doing it by having um, a stamp. Now, uh -huh. this is a stamp that I've designed called Xanadu. It has all of the necessary shapes to make what you see what there. Seen. Uh -huh. And you need paint sticks. I have an assortment here of lovely colors. There and are, they come in like 20 something oh, colors? Oh, there's 21 beautiful 20? areas, a dozen oh. colors. There's just a few here. I love the sheen I do uh, too. of the uh -huh. iridescent colors. When you work with paint sticks, it's oil paint in stick form. Oh. You always need to remove the skin from the surface. You do uh -huh. that by just putting it into a napkin. Pinch twist. and twist. It mm -hmm. self seals as soon as you're finished. So which, these just l store just like they, that. Gee, they could. I just keep them in little plastic baskets mm -hmm. at home. That's a good idea. Um, then uh, when I get ready to do the rubbing, um, the first thing I would do is spray the top of my stamp with a temporary spray adhesive. Such so as the fabric doesn't shift, shift while you're... Yes, uh -huh. on this I complex d detail, if it's shifted, you start over. You're oh. never going to line this thing up again. I see. Well, that so makes sense. So it just makes sense to keep it from doing uh -huh. that in the first place. My fabric um, goes on top. Now, would you cut your stamp apart or no, leave it? No, oh, I do not. That's because easier to work with, it isn't is, it? It's exactly right. It's easier to work with, and I want lots of spare parts. This uh -huh. is like playing with Legos. You know, <laughs> oh, okay. the, the, the more you have, the merrier, and the more your, your options are. Mm -hmm. Fabric goes on top. I'm going to do a, just a very quick a little rubbing here. Now, do you always use a cotton, or can you use a I silk? I do for this purpose. You could. This. You, paint sticks will work on any porous surface, oh. but for this purpose, I think a nice, tightly woven cotton, cotton. is our best bet and also cheapest. Oh, okay. uh, We want to use um, bright colors, lights, mediums, and darks. Uh -huh. You can see, like on this, you can see the lime green fabric that was behind it. Mm -hmm. You can see this was red, and I'm about to do one on black. What I'm going for here in my, my pieces that I'm 
uh, painting, I want a variety of lights, mediums, and darks. Oh, okay. Contrast. Uh -huh. That's really all I care about. It's not a color thing. It's about contrast. contrast. The way it works is that you make sure the fabric doesn't move. You mm -hmm. hold it, and you take little short, quick strokes. And you do it multiple times. It's like hitting it three times. Over yep. uh -huh. Always in one direction. Oh. One of the biggest problems people have with using paint sticks is they ha you have to get rid of your instinct to color. That's Back what and I forth. would I think. First Everyone day. does because uh -huh. we have muscle memory from when we did uh -huh. when we first learned how to color. Here, you never want to go back and forth. It moves the fabric, and that is a bad thing. Oh. Uh -huh. So oh, um, I can go right over the top. Uh -huh. I can create these multicolored effects like this, and I could keep going with this, uh -huh. but this should suffice. You could put pink and purple and whatever you want. I could you do to. just one color, which is what you're seeing here. Oh, uh -huh. that's just one that would color. Be easy to start it's with. It's light gold uh -huh. on um, the red on fabric. Red. Uh -huh. It's very effective. My next step would be then to take. Um, these yeah. pieces. Oh, this is what mm -hmm. you just would have it's finished. It's between uh -huh. um, two. It's I'm using light steamacine two here, which is this product. It's pressure sensitive. It's got a temporary stick feature, which comes in very handy uh -huh. during the assembly process. And when I fuse them, you're turning it over. Aren't I'm you? turning it over because what I want is to be able to see that this web has actually melted. It just takes a few seconds. Oh, it changes color. And it changes uh -huh. color. That way, I ha am not cutting and finding out that something uh -huh. didn't get didn't melted yeah. the first time through. And you use a hot, dry iron, no I, steam. Hot, dry iron. I remove the top sheet. And then, um, important thing to notice about this is when I cut these out, I am leaving a little narrow edge of color. Oh. I'm not cutting right on the line. I am leaving this little narrow edge. It's about a sixteenth uh -huh. inch of a and why do you do that? I do that because it gives me color separation for the next step. Oh, that's Otherwise, a good point. <laughs> it always schmo it schmooshes together uh -huh. then. So we'll just yeah, we get can... this out of okay. the way and I'm going to move to my little sample here. And I'm going to build a basic block. And I noticed, I will comment just briefly, um, you can go ahead and start working with this fairly soon, mm -hmm. but you really, after you mm -hmm. fuse it, mm -hmm. uh, do you need to let it set after it, at that point, or are you uh, ready to go? I like to wait about 24 hours before I put the fusible web on. It's okay. a practical wait matter. I don't hours. like it coming off on my hands. Sure. Mm -hmm. I could do it right away, uh -huh. but there is But a, it's not messy to work with. That's It doesn't well, smear. Well, it will. Oh, yes. does it? You, do, you do this enough, and yes. Paint <laughs> sticks will, when you do this, you want to cover your work surface okay. with plastic. It will <laughs> get on your hands. It will get on your clothes and the floor. So. I see. Okay. Well, it, thanks for the warning. It's not liquid, but that those little bits of skin will attach themselves okay. all over the That's place. That's good to know. Yes. So here, then, I'm going to, this is my, I call this my set of four. What I'm working mm -hmm. with is a one and three quarter inch block, and there's a set of four here. Mm -hmm. And you can see this little narrow edge. Yes. So this is, the, this is, back to the cake analogy, this is the bottom of my cake, my bottom layer. My second layer, then, mm -hmm. I would take a two and a half inch stamp, which would be the size that I, I did the little demo on mm -hmm. back there. It would be one of these, mm -hmm. and it would go right on top. I would center it on top. I remove the paper, and I can s just stick it right on. And it's just temporary and at this point. It's temporary uh -huh. at this point. But if I look at this and decide, eh, don't it's like those colors, or something, I can mm -hmm. pick something else. Then the top of my basic block is another small block. This comes from a different set, but it's also a one and three quarter inch mm -hmm. stamp. I could have this done one. it. I could have done this. I could have mm -hmm. used this, or I could have used one of these one of as those. well. Uh -huh. So now I have a basic block, which looks just like this. Mm -hmm. And this, then, if we go to my uh, little sample here, here is, I that haven't fused block. those down. Oh. I do have some orientation marks, so I know where um, the, the centers mm -hmm. are of each side. And my shape just, you start always in the middle like this. And I see why you leave that little sixteenth uh -huh. of an inch. It's this color separation. Now, That's amazing. I could choose mm -hmm. to uh, 
push these together and not leave the gap. But I left the gap here and you can see the black fabric. Uh -huh. The next step, if I wanted to do a medium sized block, which you're seeing here, is I would oh, find, smaller. I uh -huh. would make another basic block and I would cut it four into inch. four triangles. Because uh -huh. if just cut with your rotary cutter, mm -hmm. edge to edge. edge to edge, and voila, you have little triangles. Mm -hmm. And they sit right here. Huh. And that makes a basic block. Uh -huh. It's as easy as that. So if, this size, and then mm -hmm. it can go to this size, or even it, larger it if you want. It can become oh. larger, which this is one's the middle. This one. uh -huh. And we do that by having two blocks that are identical that you see right here. Mm -hmm and you cut them just once, and this will Pack. make a large triangle. Uh-huh, or large triangle. It, there are some interesting permutations you can do of this. For example, you can just flip these around and leave negative space oh, and uh -huh. get, but see how different these all are based on the, pe you know, the stamp uh -huh. designs you're using, the colors you use. Now, did you, um, did you just, uh, adhere this to the okay. background or did um, you is it sewn well i'm not um but. precise enough to be able to layer these <laughs> on one piece of hand dyed fabric so oh. i do my blocks and uh -huh. then i put i could either put the spray uh, spray adhesive and to position them that uh -huh. way and pin them or i could actually put another fusible on the back of that and then position them so everything is nice and even mm -hmm. so that's how you can do what appears to be very complicated piecing it does look complicated without look piecing or sewing a single stitch well, what a great technique yeah thank you so much for sharing that with us yep you're very welcome <laughs>